One of the biggest challenges when using a binovior is to get the telescope to reach focus. This normally isn't a problem with most catadioptric telescopes like SETs. With refractors it's a bit more tricky but still doable. Here a Berlow or glass path corrector is required to solve this problem. But with Newtonian reflectors, such as Dobsonian telescopes, this can be a real challenge or even impossible without resorting to drastic measures like sewing off a section of the optical tube. This is why in today's video I am going to focus on this use case and take a deeper look at using binoviewers with Newtonian reflectors. This is also going to be the third video in my Binoviewer series. So grab a snack and a fresh cup of coffee because this is going to be a good one. Hi, I am Bogdan Damian and welcome to another deep dive video. So why is it so hard to make binos work with Newtonian reflectors? Well, it all has to do with the available back focus. You see, every telescope has a fixed focal point in space that is somewhere near the focuser. The focuser's draw tube or mirror assembly has the ability to slide in and out a few centimeters to help the attached eyepiece or accessory reach that fixed point in space. No matter the telescope type, this focal point can usually be reached without a problem when using normal eyepieces or accessories. This only requires a minimum amount of back focus, from a few millimeters to a couple of centimeters, and focusers can normally deal with this without any issues. But as soon as you add in a piece of equipment that extends the path the light has to travel considerably, like a big 2 inch mirror diagonal or in our case a binoviewer, the situation changes dramatically. For example, Catadioptic telescopes with their very slow focal ratios of f11 and slower usually have no trouble compensating for the extra path length added by the bino. Their back focus is around 13 to 15 centimeters, which is plenty enough to accommodate for the length of a bino, so these are safe. On the other hand, refractors need a bit of help in reaching the focal point. Their back focus isn't that generous usually between 8 and 12 cm. Here the use of a bellow or glass path corrector with an amplification power of 1.5 to 2.5 is in most cases necessary to achieve focus. And this is totally fine, but even if it does not sound like a big change, it is enough to reduce the field of view and therefore also slightly limit the observing experience. Looking at Newtonian reflectors, the situation keeps worsening still. Here the optical design limits the amount of back focus available considerably. Depending on the model, the amount of available back focus is usually somewhere between 3 and 6 cm. And this is why with a solid tube dub, for example, where the length of the light path is fixed, the best case scenario usually is you need a 2 or 2.5 times amplifier to obtain focus. The worst case is that you need a much more powerful amplifier, something like a 3x or more, which limits the field of view so much that the viewing experience severely gets compromised. Not only this, but in such a case you realize that all the eyepieces with their focal lengths that you usually observe with don't work anymore. You need other eyepieces with much longer focal lengths to cope with the strong amplification. So yeah, this isn't an ideal situation, to say the least. And unfortunately, this is exactly what happened to me and my 12 inch product from Omega. Let me elaborate. After successfully testing the Max Bright 2 in combination with my 4 inch refractor and only needing a 1.7x glass path corrector, I was keen on making the Bino work with my 12 inch dub as well. The reasons for this are obvious. The dub has a light gathering capacity that is almost 10 times higher than that of the 4 inch refractor, which would provide some spectacular views when paired with a bino and some quality eyepieces like the Morpheus from Bother or Delight from Teleview. 
not only is the light gathering better on the DOB, but the width of the field of view at f5 is significantly wider than at f7 on the refractor, which allows me to see a wider area of the night sky. And this in turn is interesting when trying to observe wide deep sky objects like nebulas, for example. So to see what happens, I started with the same one and a quarter inch 1.7x glass path corrector and as expected, it wasn't enough. The DOB still needed a lot more back focus to be able to provide sharp images. Next step was to try it with a 2x one and a quarter inch bellow from Teleview, but this wasn't enough either. With the bino inserted into the bellow, the telescope still needed a few centimeters to reach focus. Increasing the amplification even further by replacing the 2x bellow with a 26 times class path corrector led to similar results. While I was getting closer, I still wasn't there yet. At this point, a good 3 cm were still needed to reach focus. But since now I was out of options, I decided to contact Bader Planetarium and ask for advice. They offered me helpful support in the past, so I thought I would give it a try. After explaining to them what my problem was, they kindly agreed to send me a 2 inch 1.7 times glass path corrector, specially designed to work with Newtonian reflectors. It amplifies the image, generating a good deal of back focus, 80 mm in total, and reduces comma as well. So on paper, this sounded like it would do the trick, since it's basically a 2 inch wide barrel designed to be fully inserted into the telescope's focuser. This ensures that the light beam coming from the secondary mirror is intercepted as close as possible to its reflection point on the mirror and refracted inside the glass path corrector. So the moment of truth arrived. I went outside with a dob, aligned it with the moon and peeked through the bino. And still no focus. Another 5 or 10 millimeters were still needed for sharp images. It was close, but in the end still not enough. You can imagine the disappointment when I realized that after four attempts to reach focus with four different amplification lenses, I still wasn't able to use a prismatic bino viewer with my Dobsonian telescope. I mean, I knew that it was going to be a challenge going in, but I didn't expect it to be this difficult. Don't get me wrong. The amplification lenses weren't a problem here. They performed very well by generating the advertised back focus. It just wasn't enough for the 12 inch f5 dob that I have. The problem is rather the product of the somewhat high profile of the Omega focuser that is eating too much light path and the natural limitations of this particular 12 inch Newtonian reflector model from GSO, Omega being just a brand of GSO hardware. At this point, my only choices were either to get a much more powerful bellow or glass path corrector like a 3X or something, which in my opinion doesn't really make sense and physically alter the optical tube. There are a couple of options available here from shortening it to moving the primary mirror up the tube a few centimeters, but I wasn't going to do any of this stuff, even though I enjoy the occasional DIY project. But this seemed a little too invasive and too permanent of a modification for my taste. And at the end of the day, it's not guaranteed that it will turn out as expected. Furthermore, the compatibility with existing eyepieces and accessories for non bino viewer observations might also suffer from such a modification. So I reverted to the only option left for me, get a different telescope. It wasn't an easy choice because I love my dub, but I didn't see any other way around this issue. So I decided to sell it and get another dub instead, but this time one with a height adjustable optical tube where back focus wouldn't be an issue anymore. Here it didn't take long to find the right match and I ended up getting the 10 inch flex tube from Skywatcher. Why 10 inch and not 12 inch? Well, 
this is a story for another video. But in short, the 12 inch became over the years too bulky and too heavy to lug around every time I wanted to look at the night sky. So I started using it less and less to a point where I almost always preferred observing with the 4 inch refractor instead. But as I said, there might be another video coming soon on this topic, so make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss it. Back to the flex tube. It's a partially open tube design where the top part containing the secondary mirror assembly and focuser can be moved up and down along three supporting rails. Out of the box, these rails feature two notches that allow us for two configurations, one where the tube is fully extended and another one where it is only 70% or so extended. And in this second configuration where the light path is 11.5 cm shorter, I have absolutely no trouble reaching focus with the binar without the need of any amplification lenses whatsoever. Granted, I'm experiencing a slightly reduced field of view in this configuration because the light beam reflected by the primary mirror is a bit wider than the diameter of the secondary mirror at this point in space, but this is negligible, especially when compared to the significant benefits it brings with it. So while pairing a prismatic binovior with a Newtonian reflector is definitely doable, it's also very dependent on the type of reflecting telescope you have. I have seen a lot of friends rocking a bino with their solid tube dubs without a problem, with only a two times ish amplification lens needed. I've also seen others struggle like I did and then resorting to permanently modifying their telescopes to shorten the light path just to be able to use their favorite binos. Of course, there is always the option of getting a linear bino viewer instead. Its design cleverly uses mirrors and lenses to produce a zero optical path solution to this problem. Sure, it has other limitations like a narrow clear aperture and being susceptible to alignment problems, but at least with respect to back focus, all the issues get eliminated from the get-go. To find out more, I encourage you to check out my other videos on bino viewers. I leave links in the description below. But at the end of the day, is all this trouble really worth it? Well, just like I said in the other videos, I firmly believe that having the ability to observe with both eyes simultaneously is one of the very few true upgrades one can make to an astro setup. In my humble opinion, it's a game changer. Anyway, that's been it. I hope you all enjoyed it. Let me know what you think about bino viewers and what your experience with bino viewers, especially in combination with Newtonian reflectors is. I'm very much looking forward to reading your comments below. Thanks for watching and catch you guys in the next one.